Hey guys, Kingpin here, and welcome to the first episode of Franchise Mode, our new Planet Zoo series here on the channel. In case you missed the introduction video to the series I uploaded yesterday, we're actually going to be continuing on the franchise I first started with, but I hardly made any progression. I only have 641 conservation credits, and I just want to see where we're at and I can compare the zoo later to see how far I've come. Now what biome should our new zoo be in? Hmm. Well, the last zoo we made, the Akron Zoo, which is the city I'm living in currently, it was temperate in North America. And since you guys weren't a part of that series and I really enjoyed the layout, it wasn't too hard yet since we're still not very good at the game. I think I'm going to pick the exact same layout as that one, just so I know it's coming. Now that I have some experience, we'll play on medium. And you know what, we'll try the sculpted terrain too. I'm going to call this zoo the Columbus Zoo, since that's the zoo that's taking a ton of inspiration from. And it's my favorite zoo in the country. I used to go there every day as a kid, and I really like it. Whether it's Minecraft or Planet Zoo, there's nothing like opening a sandbox game and having a complete blank slate. Let's have some fun. I've spent every single minute in this game I've played so far trying to learn how to make exhibits for animals, and not necessarily build buildings from scratch. So luckily the workshop exists, and I don't really have to get good at it right now. This building looks really professional, it looks really nice, and it has every single building we need to start off the zoo. It's going to take over half of our money, but I think it's worth it. Alright, we finally got the path all connected up. Now we just need to figure out what to do with the main area path. I wonder what we're going to do with this central area of the zoo. It's always the toughest part. If you watched episode 0, you'll know what animal I want to start with. Just like the Columbus Zoo when you first enter it, the first animal we're going to use here are the California Sea Lions. They're going to be really cool and a good first impression for this zoo. I was messing around with the paths, and I figured if you configure them like I did, you have these little sections in the middle, and I think that is a perfect area that we can have some planters, maybe some trees, or any kind of wildlife. The main gimmick of this zoo is going to be three sections. This is going to be the area of the first one, although we have to use heat maps and make sure that's not... Yep, as long as the path's not in that red, the guests won't get bothered by it, so we just have to make it carefully go around it. So for example, this path might lead to Africa, Asia, North America, Australia, who knows. But there's going to be three paths. Alright, so this is my plan for the exhibit today. Remember, we're doing California sea lions and I kind of want there to be a viewing area that can see underwater where I was just pointing with the cursor. And then the exhibit is going to go all around the right side of the screen. So there's going to be a viewing area right here, right, kind of in a U shape like this. I don't know if I'll be able to do that in my first try. It's going to be tricky, but I want the guests to be able to view these seals from a long distance. If you watched episode zero, you'll remember a big part of this series is education. So let's learn about our sea lions we're adding soon. The pink on this map shows where the California sea lion can be found in the wild today. And luckily they're not endangered. There's approximately 650,000 of them. California sea lions are extremely social animals, and they often travel in large groups to protect each other from predators. Animals without good defense weapons like claws or horns often do this because they look more intimidating as a group. Now in saying that, don't think sea lions are friendly creatures. Unlike seals, they're actually quite fast on land, and have much sharper teeth. They may look cute and cuddly, but they're predators, hunting fish and small mackerel along the coast of California to feed their young and themselves. While all seals can do on land is kind of hop around using their bellies, sea lions can actually pretty much run. Despite them being able to move on land, they're much faster in the water. They can even reach speeds of up to 30 miles per hour underwater, which is really fast for a mammal. Like I said in episode zero, I really value your guys' input, 
So if you have any animals you think would go good next to sea lions or any animal you really want to see in the exhibit, feel free to drop it in the comments and I'll try to reply to everyone. One key thing that makes exhibits look really good in this game is making a custom barrier. But for underwater exhibits like seals, sea lions, penguins later in the DLCs, otters and beavers, I feel like you don't really need to do that. Yeah, we'll detail it up later, but for now a simple glass wall looks fine. It's the easiest way for guests to see them, and there's a lot of glass so they'll be able to see them from a lot of different directions. Alright, we got the basic shape done. It took a little longer than I thought, because sometimes the terrain generation can be a little bit finicky using the tools that you're given. But now let's try to fill it with water and see if we did it right, otherwise that all would have been for nothing. And I saw... yep, valid. Okay, perfect, exactly like I wanted. The only thing that we did a little bit wrong was we're going to need more land, obviously, for the seals, and I think the land I did build is slightly too tall, but I don't think they'll be able to get out of here. If they are, that'll be an easy fix. But making things watertight is what I struggle the most with, and we got it on our first try. Now let's just edit the terrain and give them a little bit more area to swim. We're also going to need an area for the zookeepers to be able to get in. And since this is all going to be underwater, we're going to have to raise a small section of the fence. Luckily we can use the pre-built terrain tools to do that, and it shouldn't be that hard. The problem is we're going to have to get a staff path back here, and we built right on the edge of the barricade, so there's only one area we can possibly do that, and that's to our right currently. So let's see if we can't get this path to come right along the side, and hopefully give our people the best view of the seals possible before we need to put the staff path in. The Columbus Zoo, which this is modeled after in case you forgot, has a really cool seal and sea lion exhibit right at the start. Although in that one there's an underwater tunnel, and they can go to the sides of you, above you, and below you. I'm not good enough at this game to do that quite yet. Heck, I don't even know if it's possible, but I'd be curious to hear in the comments if it is. Instead, what I'm going for is right at the start where you saw that little decline, I'm going to try to put some stadium seats right there in a guest talking point, so we can have seal shows. That should get a lot of early game revenue coming in if we put donation boxes and education stands down there. Hopefully the people like it as much as I do in my head. If you're just starting out, try using these terrain tools. They can be found in the terrain editing menu on the fourth slide. They're really helpful, and they can give you slight inclines, slight declines, or even the opposite, and they can give you big indents to make underground exhibits. But for now, we just want this slightly above the water line. It'll be like the seal's main island, probably where their food and the majority of their enrichment's gonna be. Alright, that took longer than I care to admit because I'm not very good at the pathing yet, but the outline of our exhibit's officially done. We have this staff-only path with the door right there, so now our zookeepers will be able to deliver the seals into the exhibit. We're about to put them in, actually. We just need to make sure the water can go in one final time, and hopefully I made it deep enough. The seals need two types of water. The deep dive water, which is at least two meters deep, and then normal water, which is anything above two meters. We should probably get this exhibit a little bit more ready before the seals come. That means all we have to do is smooth out the edges, and maybe add some grass or whatever terrain they like. For now I'm going to go with grass, but there's not so much exposed terrain to where if it's sand or dirt, we have to change a whole lot. Maybe we'll add another small island over here, but after that we'll just smooth it out. I'm not sure if the seals are good at climbing or not, in real life they're not, but in this game they might be able to jump out of the water with some pretty good speed. The last zoo I made, the beavers could get to some pretty surprising distances. And one thing I have noticed is that baby animals can actually traverse different area than regular sized animals. I had a cougar exhibit in my last zoo, and while the adults couldn't escape, the juveniles could get out really easily. So I'm gonna have to keep that in mind if our seals ever have offspring. I think we have two females and a male, so hopefully they'll have some babies pretty soon and we can start getting some conservation credits the natural way. I brought it up in episode 0, but I know breeding zoos are the way to play this game if you want efficiency. But efficiency isn't really how I like to play games. I want to take this really slow, and try to treat these seals with as much respect as they deserve. It's time to get the seals in the exhibit, so let's hire a small staff. It's only going to be a skeleton crew. We'll hire one of each of the important ones, being a caretaker, a keeper, a mechanic, and a vet. We'll bring in some others later. We just have to kind of 
Nah, we'll hire a security guard. You can't trust people these days. Let's get the seals. All we have to do is go to our animal storage, open animal storage, and find the seals. We're not going to be using any of these other animals in the zoo. I feel like that's kind of cheating. It's pushing it that we can have these seals, since usually we wouldn't be able to afford them at the start of a franchise. Although technically speaking, I guess it's not cheating, because each one of those cost about 2,000. So we would still have about 10 grand, which is a fourth of our money. I don't think that's really cheating. In case you guys disagree though, from now on I promise we'll only use animals that we got from this zoo. Now if we make another zoo in the franchise, this is free game. Now where are our seals? Time is actually running, so... Where are they? There's our mechanic. Where's the keeper? Nope, there they are. I thought the keeper was the one who put the seals in the exhibit, not the vet and the caretaker. I wonder if anyone can do it. Side note, how are two adult sea lions fitting in those boxes? The Zoopedia says these things can get up to 670 pounds. Those guys must be pretty dang strong in order to run with that, especially if there's two of them in one of those boxes. That's half a ton. Welcome to the zoo, Noah. Very first animal that we've had. And it looks like the terrain isn't correct, but that should be an easy fix if we keep the time paused. We'll have to check the heat maps and make sure they can traverse everywhere easily, and see if the water's good. That's gonna be a problem. It looks like they have an abundance of shallow water, which is that second symbol under space. The first symbol's land, which they also have plenty of, but they don't have a single good meter of the deep water. So that means we didn't dig deep enough, which that's another easy fix. All we're going to have to do is get rid of the water, just stay there somehow, and we'll dig you a deeper hole. Don't worry, Noah. You'll be hydrated in no time. This is such a good port of the PC version of the game. The controls aren't exactly perfect, and they take some getting used to, but on a controller, they're as good as they're possibly going to get. I play on a Series X, and I haven't had a single performance issue. The loading screens can take a little bit of time, but I don't really consider that a performance issue. There's not really much lag, and the complexity meter is not even an issue. I made a zoo last time that was relatively big, and even on sandbox mode I've been messing around just trying to rack it up, and I've never gotten a zoo past 20%. I wonder what this is after this exhibit's done. I'd guess maybe 1-2%, to and this is a huge exhibit to start off with. I should probably explain what the complexity meter even is. Since consoles are a little bit less powerful than the big PCs that some people can buy now, there's a complexity meter on the console edition, which basically makes it so you can't build unlimited amount of stuff. You can't just have the biggest zoo the world's ever seen. So it'll cap you once you hit a certain amount of space. But that space is very big. Alright, we didn't mess anything up too bad. The water still fills up, and now the seals have access to their land in three different points. One on the left, one on the right, and one in the center where their food's gonna be. And they got boxed up somehow. I don't understand. Now we should probably check the heat maps to see where they can go. Maybe give them some enrichment first. No, you know what we should do? We should fix their terrain first. They need a lot of sand, and they don't seem to like this soil very much. Although they don't outright hate it. If you look on the soil section where it says bad, you want to get it in that white area. In the sand, we want to get up to that white area. So the easy solution here is just going to be to replace some soil with some sand, since we're shrinking soil but raising sand at the same time. There's two types of sand in this game, rough and coarse, and I don't really know if there's a difference between the two, but if you look on the top, as you see we're placing the sand, that meter is going up and the soil meter is going down, which is exactly what we want. 
But there's a lot more soil in this exhibit than you'd think, because it's all under the water too, and I'm pretty sure that affects it. But as of right now, we're almost done actually. It looks like they almost have enough sand, but there's still way too much soil. But that's just the minimum amount of sand they want. They can have a lot more. Opening up your heat map tab, you'll find traversable area. It'll make all the animals in an exhibit blue, and if you click on one, it'll show where it can go. The blue is where it can go, and the white it can't go. And it'll tell you if it can escape. Which, if you look at our fence, there's no red icons, so it can't escape. But the problem is it can't really go on the land masses we've created yet, except for this big one in the middle. So we're gonna have to get rid of the water again, and then smooth it down. That shouldn't be very hard. Alright sea lions, let's try that again. Come out of your box, I think you're Noah at least, I forget the other one's name. Traversable area, check, and it looks like, wait a minute, we need water, that would probably help. They're not climbers, they're swimmers. Alright, take two. Now let's go to traversable area, and hopefully, wait a minute, what happened? Oh, it's because we stopped time to build. Now let's just reset time, unpause the game effectively, click them, yep, perfect. Looks like they can go everywhere, and it makes sense they can't access it from the other side of that since it's so much deeper down there. But it looks like they officially have access to every single area on the map, at least in their exhibit. That's good, exactly how I wanted it to turn out. Now we need to give them some enrichment items. In real zoos do this too. If you don't know what enrichment is, it's pretty much just toys, or food items that animals can have fun with so they don't get too bored. In this game there's two types of enrichment, food and toy. And since we've done research in our last zoo, luckily we have a slight head start, although we don't have everything that they like yet. But we have this submarine toy, we have frozen fruit, we have lots of things that they'll like. Does this thing not sink wherever it goes? I wouldn't mind placing a second one, but that is cursed. It looks like a balloon. Maybe it is a balloon, who knows. But let's... I think a feeder would be nice. Remember, these things are predators and eat fish. Let's put this one in the water next to the, where the guest viewing area is going to be. These things are kind of ugly. If you know how their hitboxes work in the comment section, please let me know because I kind of just want it to be like this sticking out, but I don't know if it'll be able to be refilled. We'll test that later. Let's find the seals and see what else they like. Come here, Noah. It looks like they like soccer balls, those Skittle toys. I think that's a big snowball. This will be cute there. The guests will be able to see them play from really far away with that soccer ball on that island. Ooh, this could be fun. It's pretty much just a giant water spilling thing. Kind of like you'd see it at an amusement park or a water park. But where should we put it? Putting it in water might be a little bit redundant. Plus this can cool them off. And if they want to be cool and be on land, they could have an option. I don't know if seals are easily like temperature dependent or not. They live in California, so they shouldn't get too hot. The reason the screen turned orange and yellow is because when you pull out this thing, it automatically turns your heat map for temperature on, since this thing should be used to cool animals off. We'll bury it in the ground a little bit, and I think that works perfectly on that island. It'll be one of the first things the guests will be able to see, and hopefully the seals like it. It would be really cute if they used that, and that's the guest's first impression of the zoo. First impressions mean a lot in this game. We'll add some of these water jets, too, to this little island, so they can have a sprinkler. Thank you. 
Now the seals are going to need to eat too, so we'll give them this food tray. And we'll give them a big one, because hopefully these guys will breed and there will be a bunch of them in here eventually. The keepers need to have access to these, so we have to put it on this first area. Plus it's away from the guests, so they can have a slight amount of privacy while they eat. Matter of fact, we'll add a majority of their food enrichment items over here on this main island. Apparently they like this dog toy. We'll give them a block of frozen fruit, and then maybe we'll put one way over there on that other island, just in case they get hungry when they're far away. They should like it over there. We'll give them some bedding over here too. It says they don't need any hard shelter. I guess the rain doesn't bother these guys that much. And yeah, that makes sense. They live pretty much underwater anyways, so why would some water bother them when they're out of it? The last thing we need to do is give our sea lions some plants, and it looks like they don't like a whole lot of plant coverage. Matter of fact, it's fine how it is right now if we're just worried about making them happy, but not having any plants in here could be a bit of an eyesore. I don't know if I want to do palm trees. I feel like they wouldn't like trees a whole lot at all, plus that'll fill up the coverage meter really fast. So we'll just do some of this underwater grass in areas where the guests can most commonly see them. This is really close to their fish feeder too, so maybe some of the fish can hide in the grass and the seals can get some hunting experience. One tip I have for this game, and trust me, I know I'm new but this is really good, is that when you're placing plants, make sure you have random rotation on. It might not look like much since we're only using these which pretty much look the same from all angles, but if you're working with trees or any plants that have distinctive shapes, it really makes things look more realistic when you're placing them. The exhibit is really starting to take shape now. The only thing we have left to do is make it a little bit more educational, and then make our seating area right kind of over there. Luckily, on the Planet Zoo workshop, which you can access from the main menu, I found this really cool design for a blue, or not a blue board, what am I talking about? One of these education boards, and the, what makes it special is that it has a speaker inside of it. Speakers and education boards are typically two separate things, but with this blueprint, we can make it absolutely perfectly placed every single time. We'll add another little viewing area over here so the guests can get an even better view of the seals' private... I keep saying seals, I keep meaning sea lion. Seals is just easier to say, sorry guys. But we'll make a small little path over here for easier viewing as soon as you get in the zoo. Especially since it's near their big fountain. Education boards and speakers both need power. And as you can see, the starting area, the guest entrance, actually kind of acts as a small power source. I hope it acts as a water source too, that can regulate the temperature and the quality of it. But, if we place these education boards inside of that blue circle that we just saw, they'll have power. If not, it'll just be a black screen and people will hate it. Now I made one crucial mistake when placing those two. I forgot to turn them on. Don't forget to turn the speaker and the education board on and set it to the animal that you're looking at, otherwise guests will be confused. You can crank up the range of these speakers too, but since this one's built pretty close to the edge of the map, it doesn't have to be that loud. This one's more isolated, so it can be really loud. Let's crank this one up pretty much as loud as it can get. See if we can't get a size 20 on here. Yep, perfect. Now there's just this small little dead zone in the middle, so we can use another blueprint that you get from pre-ordering the game, I believe, or buying the Deluxe Edition, I don't know. I have the Ultimate Edition. I don't really get Ultimate Editions that often, but this game seemed really worth it since we already know the DLCs. But I have this blueprint, and you, a lot of you should too. 
Normally I don't like to do hard jump cuts like that without explaining what I did, but I had to stop recording because this took me so long to figure out. Pathing in this game in the terrain generation is just one thing I haven't mastered yet. But we have our stadium seats along the bottom of the exhibit now, so the guest can be able to watch the educator, which we haven't set the month yet. But during April as of right now, they'll be able to watch a seal show right down there. Now all we have to do is use rocks and foliage to blend it into the environment. The exhibit's almost done. Detailing's always the easy part. Sorry if you caught that, my earbud just fell out. Alright, now the exhibit's looking close to being done, we just need to add the final details. I'm not quite sure where I got this sea lion statue, I think it was from the campaign. But I don't have it gold or silver, and I've done all of the other missions gold and silver, so I'm really not sure where I got this. Maybe you guys have it too then, if you haven't done the campaign either. Side note, the campaign in this game is surprisingly difficult. But, I'm thinking these are going to look really nice for kind of statues at the front of the exhibit. Maybe we can have a small little pool here. I think there's special effect items, actually, that can simulate water jets. But all we did for the detailing was add a slight bit of foliage, mainly just a couple of trees, and then use tropical rocks, since they're more vibrant, to make a little natural barrier. Another big tip I can give is don't leave empty space. For example, we have this relatively large empty space that's big enough to fit a building, and it's head-on from our guest entrance. So I'm thinking this will be a great spot for the information center to be. That way, as soon as you get in the zoo, you'll be able to get maps or whatever information you need. Despite the problems the complexity meter might pose, I'm really going to try to have every square inch of this zoo covered with some type of life. For now, it'll just be flowers, but later we're going to have much more exhibits, a lot of cool natural formations, maybe some giant trees, who knows? The first custom fence I ever used used these as kind of a base since they have mesh and wood, but I'm thinking this is just going to look perfectly fine for this basic starter fence. All it's guarding is some flowers and azaleas. It's not like we have to keep a grizzly bear in. Let's test the effect of those water jets. This is a large one. I wonder how it's going to look. I think that's a good spot for it. Let's unfreeze time. Yeah, that looks really nice. Let's just add a few more of those. And apparently guests think the tickets are underpriced, despite there only being three animals and they're all the same in this entire zoo. That's a good sign. We can probably double the price. Let's add another one there. Maybe another one back there. We don't want the people on the back of the bleachers to get absolutely flooded by these things. So we can't go too overboard yet, despite me wanting to. These things also aren't cheap. They're $250 per. So we can really only afford like six more. But I think that looks really nice. If we can use a little bit more rock and somehow cover this area in, I'm thinking it'll be perfect. So far, so good. 
With only three animals, we almost have 300 people in the zoo. And I think we're profiting overall. We might as well bump up the price of the tickets a little bit. We want this to be affordable, but we also have to stay open. But look at this exhibit we made. Obviously all of it's not detailed yet. We still need something in the middle section. But the important thing is our seals are at 100% happiness, and they really like it. They have enough space where they can easily breed and have five or six seal pups and still have room to spare. But I think that's going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Kingpin out. See you later. Thank you.